Rates of change. Suppose y is a quantity that depends on another quantity x. Thus y is a function of x, and we write y is equal to f of x. Now if x changes from a value of x1 to x2, then the change in x, also called the increment of x, is the following. This is the symbol delta, so that we abbreviate this as the change in x is equal to x2 minus x1. And the corresponding change in y, delta y, or the change in y, is equal to f of x2 minus f of x1. So now what this turns into is the difference quotient. So if you take a look here, we have the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. So we have the change in y over the change in x. So the change in x, the denominator is x2 minus x1. Change in y is f of x2 minus f of x1, so therefore the change in y is f of x2 minus f of x1. So this is called the average rate of change of y with respect to x over the interval from x1 to x2, and it can be interpreted as the slope of the secant line in the figure below. So recall here that this represents the change of y. This represents the change of x in between the two values of x1 and x2. So the point P represents x1, f of x1, and then point Q represents x2 and f of x2. So the average rate of change is the slope of PQ, and the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the slope of tangent at P. So now, by analogy with velocity, we consider the average rate of change over smaller and smaller intervals by letting x2 approach x1 and therefore letting the change of x approach 0. The limit of these average rates of change is called the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at x1 which is interpreted as the slope of the tangent to the curve y equals f of x at the point p of x1, f of x1. So definition six, the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the limit as the change in x approaches zero or delta x approaches zero, where this is delta y divided by delta x which is equal to the limit as x2 approaches x1 of f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, we recognize this limit as being the derivative f prime of x. We know that one interpretation of the derivative f prime of a is as the slope of the tangent line to the curve when y is equal to f of x when x is equal to a. So we now have a second interpretation. So the derivative f prime of a is the instantaneous rate of change of y is equal to f of x with respect to x when x is equal to a. Now the connection with the first interpretation is that if we sketch the curve y equals f of x, then the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent to this curve at the point where x equals a. This means that when the derivative is large, and therefore the curve is steep, as at the point P, as you can see here in the figure below, the y values change rapidly. When the derivative is small, the curve is relatively flat, as at the point Q, and therefore the y values change slowly. So again, you can see here that the y values are changing rapidly at p, therefore is a steep curve, and it's changing slowly at the point q. Now in particular, if s is equal to f of t is the position function of a particle that moves along a straight line, then f prime of a is the rate of change of the displacement s with respect to the time t. So in other words, f prime of a is the velocity of the particle at time t equals a. The speed of the particle is the absolute value of the velocity, 
and that is the absolute value of the derivative, or f prime of a.